Hey guys, before I button this pyramid capacitor analyzer back up, I uh, thought it'd be interesting to take a closer look at that grid controlled rectifier circuit. Also, I wanted to address a whole bunch of comments I got from you guys. Thanks for all the suggestions. Firstly, I was running this off of 117 volts off of Variac. I've cranked that thing down to as low as 80 volts. The output voltage is still much too high going off of the dial indicator. So, the other thing is, the meter is right. The meter has always been right. What's way off is this. The pointer looks like it should go from off and up to these various ranges to 600 volts. However, when I put it at the 300 mark, I'm getting about 450, and the meter shows 450, and the output, as confirmed with my multimeter, is 450. And the lowest it'll go is about 120 or 130. However, on the 60 volt range, it's basically working. It goes from about 0 to 55 volts. So, I could leave it as is. The only real issue is, uh, well, two things. One, I can't, I can't, just, I just have to ignore this, the numbers on here, and always go off of the meter. And two, I can't test any capacitor voltages between about 60 volts and 120. So if I got a 100 volt cap, I can't test it. Or I can't test it at 100 volts anyways. I can like test it at about 55 or 60 volts. So, is this the way it was supposed to work? And these numbers on here are just sort of a vague indication of what the output voltage is, and it's just, that's the way it works. Maybe, because I know several other owners who have tried to fix it and weren't able to and have exactly the same problem. But, there seem to be several people who have one of these, and it does, <laughs> the, the, it does work. Whereas when you put this on 150 or 300, you get about 150 or 300. Alright, so could there be a problem with the circuit? I've gone over everything. I haven't found any problems. All the power resistors are within spec. I checked potential ground issues. Um, swapped out tube. Didn't find any problems. So let's take a look at the circuit and then I want to get some test equipment and go over it before I button things back up. So they do have a schematic in here where they isolate just that. Here it is. So there's not much to it. So unlike a conventional power supply, there's no rectifier tube. All there is, is basically a triode, and a high voltage secondary, and a filament supply, and a potentiometer, and that's about it. Oh, sorry, and a filter cap. So, high voltage secondary, we got about 800 volts AC between these two points. And then why? That's just a 6.3 volt filament supply. And there's our tube high low switch that goes from the that controls the 600 volt range versus a 60 volt range what um, differences it make well when it's in the high range this is basically a triode when it's in the low range they connect I think that's the suppressor or the screen grid they connect that to the main grid which means it does a better job at restricting electron flow which really reduces the current going through the tube, so you get a much lower output voltage. So how does this thing work? Well, the weird thing is the plate and the grid always have AC on them. The cathode is the only place you got DC because of the filter electrolytics down here. If you took those out, you'd have AC or, well, sort of pulsed AC on the cathode anyways. So depending on where you're at in the AC cycle, you get wildly different voltages. So this tube isn't always conducting. Uh, so I, th I thought it'd be curious to get a scope on here because using my 
DC voltmeter, the values don't really make a whole lot of sense. You would think that when you measure the grid voltage with respect to the cathode, as the grid gets more positive with respect to the cathode, the output voltage would increase. But actually, as the output voltage increases, the grid gets more negative as far as the DC component goes. But there's also an AC component, so that's why this circuit's a little bit difficult to analyze. Now, I did get a suggestion from one of you guys that was kind of intriguing, which is to um, rectify this thing. Um... In other words, throw in some silicon rectifier so we do have DC on the plate and DC on the grid. It'd be cool if this secondary had a tap on it. Because uh, in reality, this is sort of a split power supply. There's sort of a virtual ground. And notice not on either side of the secondary goes to ground directly. It goes through a resistor to ground. Uh, so... It's kind of weird. It's a little hard to wrap your head around. So I almost need to plot this out as the uh, AC goes through its cycle on the secondary. What exactly is this tube doing? What it comes down to is it's conducting for part of the cycle. And the amount of time the tube is conducting is controlled by this. Um... So I thought it'd be interesting to get a dual trace scope uh, going on this and maybe it'll make a little more sense. I think what's basically happened, the reason it won't go below say 120 volts is even with this potentiometer or one extreme, there's always a portion of the AC cycle where the grid gets um, a high enough potential compared to the cathode that the tube will conduct. You need to get this grid at like more than uh, more than negative 100 volts to completely cut the tube off when you've got 600 plus volts on the plate. You really need, it's not like a uh, tube where you have a grid bias of like minus 5 volts or minus 10 volts. So you need to get to like minus 150 volts to completely cut this tube off when you've got 600 plus volts on the plate. So what he, uh, this one viewer has suggested is somehow rectify this up so that I can get like with a bridge rectifier and get a positive and a negative voltage and filter it so we got DC on the plate on the grid and get that grid so it goes negative enough to completely cut this tube off and I'd probably have to play around with resistor values and such that I got the right range that I wanted to out of it. I don't know that I want to go that far with this project. Um, in fact, <laughs> I really do want to button this up and get back to my my other ongoing projects. But since this circuit is so unusual and seemed to pique so much interest, uh, I thought it was uh, worthy of a little more uh, exploration. All right, let's go probing around and see if we can make some sense of this. And I warn you, it is going to be a little confusing. Part of it is, well, let's look at the schematic again. The black and the red, these are the output jacks to your capacitor under test. The black does not go to ground. Black goes to one side of the secondary. The red goes through a resistor and around and over to the cathode of this tube, which is basically rectified and filtered. So we actually have AC on the black and filtered DC on the red. And there's no ground reference. There is sort of an artificial ground they create here with these two resistors, so it's sort of a floating ground. There's no center tap on this transformer. So, what does all that mean? Well, one, be a little bit careful when you're probing around that you don't ground something that shouldn't be grounded. What I'm going to start out with is let's look at, rather than going from the ground to any of these elements, I'm going to put my negative ground lead on the cathode and put the positive or the, the scope probe on the grid because what controls the current through a vacuum tube? The voltage in the grid relative to the cathode. The more negative the grid the less current or electrons will get through the tube 
So, let's see, cathode is pin 8, and the cathode is also the positive output. This guy, and I think this is grid. Well, my scope only goes up to 50 volts per division, so it's like 400 volts top to bottom. So I took the I took my DC offset on my scope and put it way up near the top. So this dashed line here is actually our like zero volt reference point, which in this case is actually the cathode, and that down there is the grid. And let's see, I'll get a little bit closer on that for you guys. All right, so we've got about 116 volts on the grid negative with respect to the cathode which as one of my viewers pointed out is not really enough to cut off this tube not when you've got like 800 volts on the plate that's another factor that plays into this the more voltage you have on the plate the more negative the grid needs to be to, per, to hold the electrons back so to speak so that's why when I've got this voltage control at zero the output voltage isn't zero. This needs to go more negative. And notice there's a bit of AC on that. Yeah, it's because we've got AC on the grid and AC on the plate and DC on the cathode. So, unless I want to redesign the circuit and go tinkering with it, that's, that's how it's going to be. Well, let's see what happens when we increase that output voltage. So now we're letting more AC onto the grid. And now the output voltage has gone up about 100 volts. But this may be a little counterintuitive. You might think, hey, we're looking at negative voltage. So this ground is like, think of this as zero. And as, the out, as I'm putting, well, you think I would need to make the grid less negative to let more current through the tube. So shouldn't this be moving up? Now it is a little bit. If you look at the peak of those sine waves, so here we are at the minimum output voltage. And as I turn this up, the peaks of those AC get a little bit up, but not that much. You know, you might think, hey, this line should be, the more I turn that output voltage, this line should go up and up and up and up and up. However, that's where the other factor comes into play. It's confusing. It took me a while thinking about this, like, how could this be working? It's because I'm not, not, the ground on my scope is not going to ground, it's going to the cathode. So what's also happening is that as I'm turning up the output voltage, the voltage in the cathode is going up. It's getting closer to the plate voltage, which means you don't need as much negative voltage on the grid to hold the current back. So... It's not just that we're changing the grid voltage. As we change the grid voltage, the cathode voltage is changing. So these two definitely interact with each other. And as I go out, the output goes out, out, and out, and out, and out, and out. So now I've got... But it is going up a bit, too. But check out when I get really high output voltage, like 600 volts. And that's really dropping off. But the voltage on the cathode now is getting really close to the plate voltage which means you don't need much grid voltage or bias at all to um, prevent the current flow I hope that makes some sense <laughs> and I can't really go probing like on the plate because my scope can't handle that much voltage but it's there's like 800 volts AC across these two so the plate's got about 800 volts AC on it so that's that. Um, another uh, commenter thought there might be some high frequency oscillations which could be screwing up things because six cell sixes can self oscillate. In fact, that property is used in some amateur transmitter designs. But no, basically, this just is not going negative enough to completely cut the tube off. I did try tinkering around with this one meg resistor, and that really doesn't make any difference. It's just kind of inherent with the design, I think. I could potentially try messing with those two, but 
everything else in this device is working just fine and the meter is really w well calibrated I don't want to go monkeying with it it's just I just wanted to confirm that it basically is working as it should and I wanted to kind of wrap my head around uh, how this works a bit so it's an interesting circuit if you want to I tried Googling this to hopefully find some old um, write-ups on how this circuit works um, in, a, in a better way than, than I just said it, but um, I couldn't really come up with anything. But, you know, it, take a look at that, think about it. It's, it's an interesting little, little way to make a variable DC power supply on a budget. Basically, all you need is a potentiometer, a resistor, and a tube and uh, a filter cap and you've got yourself a variable DC power supply it's called a grid controlled rectifier All right, I'm gonna button this thing back up and get back to the ongoing projects hope you enjoyed this brief explanation of how this thing works